Okay, hello guys. Good day. Welcome back sa ating channel and welcome back for another lecture on the subject personal identification. So, today we're going to be talking about the subject personal identification. I believe this is already the part 4 of our lecture. No? And uh, basically, we are set today to talk about the subtypes of fingerprint pattern. Well, anyway, uh, we discussed already on our previous uh, video the uh, three major family fat patterns of fingerprints such as arches, loop, and whirls. No? So if you haven't watched that part of the lecture yet, no? uh, you may uh, watch that later no? pagkatapos ng lecture natin dito. But I did. No? Let's try to connect uh, those things or let's try to have a little bit of overview with regards to uh, our previous like lecture later on as we are continuing our discussion for the subject matter so today we are going to be discussing two sub or two major topic they are the subtypes of the fingerprint pattern and we are talking about regal uh, we are talking about regal loop and ulnar loop as the major division of the loop pattern we are going to talk also about the uh, divisions under world patterns. We have plain world, central uh, packet loop world, accidental, and double loop worlds. No? And as well as, we are going to talk also about the uh, division of ch uh, arches. No? We have plain arch and tented arch. Lastly, we are going to cover some of the rules in locating core and delta. No? So since our lecture will be uh, mahaba -ha siya, no? uh, let's jump into our discussion immediately. Okay. So first is we will be talking about the subtypes of fingerprint patterns, specifically the division of loops. Na tinatawa, no? So in our previous discussion, we had mentioned that the key factor in identifying whether the pattern is a loop is that the presence of only one delta and then the presence of a recurving ridge no so we illustrated already in our previous lecture what is a recurving ridge no so i hope we are all familiar with regards to that already no so what is a radial loop radial loop no it's a fingerprint pattern where the downward slope or slanting of the ridge is towards the direction of the thumb which means no that the recurving ridge of this type of pattern now opens, enter and closes doon sa tinatawag nating thumb. No? So, kung saan nakabuka yung recurving ridge, no? kung iyan ay nakabuka towards the thumb, then the pattern will be considered as a radial loop. No? Pabalik na naman yan guys ng ulnar loop wherein an ulnar loop no, is a fingerprint pattern no, where the recurving ridge opens towards the little finger so to discuss further no i have here an illustration as you can see no uh let's say the illustration below kung makita nyo dyan, no i have labeled uh the hand as the left and right hand you know the the rule with regards to identifying whether a pattern is a loop uh is, is an ulnar or a radial is that we must first identify from which hand no which hand was it taken? Now, saan siya galing? Is it from the left hand or is it from the right hand? Kasi importante guys, alam natin, no, na kung saan, uh, saan hand galing yung isang fingerprint pattern, especially if loop. Kasi, uh, there are rules that uh, we knew, we need to consider no, before we will conclude that the certain pattern is indeed a radial or an ulnar bone. So, illustration number one, yung number one pattern natin dyan, no, let us assume that that is taken from our left left hand, no? So as you can see, no, that the basis for us of identifying the uh, our classifying loops is the little finger and the thumb finger. Yan yung uh, major indicator natin. So for uh, the figure number one, no, we notice that the uh, recurving ridge, no opens towards the ulnar bone na tinatawag which means that the pattern is considered as ulnar loop no anyway the ulnar bone or ulna bone is located in our little finger doon sa ating hinliliit 
since that is the opening of the uh, recurving ridge then we consider that as the ulnar loop no but no let's say for example that the same fingerprint pattern illustration number one was taken galing siya doon sa right hand natin no mag-iiba na yung pattern niya so instead that it will be an ulnar loop no pag yan ay galing sa ating right hand that will be considered as a radial loop why because the open no the opening now of the recurving ridge no yung kung saan nakabuka yung ating recurving ridge is towards the thumb already if no the same pattern is taken doon sa ating right right hand no so figure number 2 no if that's that pattern is taken from the left hand definitely that is an example of an radial loop radial yan kasi the recurving ridge opens towards, no? Kumbaga, nakabuka yung recurving ridge papunta doon sa ating thumb na tinatawag, no? So, if that's taken from the left hand, that will be considered as a radial loop. No? If that's taken from the right hand, that will be considered as an ulnar loop, no? So, figure number three, no? If that's taken from the left hand, that will be considered as an ulnar loop. No? If that's taken from the right hand, that will be taken as, or that will be classified as a radial loop. No? For figure number 4, if that's taken from the left hand, magiging radial loop yan. No? Kapag yan ay galing naman sa right hand, yan ay magiging ulnar loop. So I do hope you get the point, no? ano yung nagiging basis natin ay identifying whether the uh, loop pattern is right uh, is radial or an ulnar loop no depende kung saan nakabuka yung kanyang recurving ridge if it's towards the little finger no yung hindi liit natin then that would be ulnar loop no kung nakabuka siya towards the right uh, towards the thumb no ng ating hinlalaki no then definitely that will be considered as a radial loop okay so i hope it's clear no uh, yung rule natin with regards to dividing or classifying uh, a loop pattern based on to the two subcategories that we have, radial and ulnar loop. Okay? Uh, we also have here the uh, types of uh, world pattern. World pattern, no? Ano na naman yung ating key indicator with regards to world patterns, no? Uh, our indicator there is the presence of at least two delta or or the presence of two delta. Na meron siyang dalawang delta. And I do hope you know already what's a core and what's a delta. Kasi we discussed that already in our previous lecture. So if you don't know yet, no, you may go back first to our first uh, lecture. No? Para na sa ganun ay uh, ma-inform kayo what we are talking about. No? What are the terms that we are using to refer to those different fingerprint patterns. No? So as we have stated, no, the key indicator for a fingerprint pattern to be considered as a world is that the presence of two delta meron siyang dalawang delta and we have core no so we have categories of a world pattern una dyan yung plane world na tinatawag well we have the definition naman no a plane world is a pattern consisting of a two deltas in which one of the ridge makes a complete turn or complete circuit or complete uh, uh 360 turn, no? Yun yung mga key indicator natin. Kung merong spiral, no? May umikot, no? Yan ang uh, 360 degrees doon sa pattern, that will be considered as a world. No? That will be considered as a world. No? And, no? Lalo na, kapag meron pa yung tinatawag natin the presence of two deltas, then that will be considered as a plane world. No? Ngayon, we have yung tinatawag natin central packet loop world wherein it's a pattern that possesses two delta. Meron siyang dalawang delta. No? That's the characteristic of a world pattern. Dalawa yung delta niya. However, it has one or more recurving ridge. No? Meron siyang recurve. No? Ang recurve, guys, that's our indicator to tell that the fingerprint pattern is a world. Uh, is a loop. No? Yun yung ating ginagamit na basihan para tawagin yung isang fingerprint pattern sa loop kapag meron yung recurve na tinatawag natin. Now, however, central packet loop world has the uh, has a pattern that recurves, no? Meron siyang recurving ridge plus meron pa siyang tinatawag nating uh, uh, ridge that forms that uh, turns into 360 yung umikot spiral like uh, fingerprint pattern, no? Ngayon, 
if there are two of them present in one finger pin so long as the location of the world no yung yung paikot is in the center and it is surrounded surrounded by one or more uh, recurving ridge magiging tawag natin diyan is central bucket loop world so we have here an illustration no for illustration number 1 that's how we illustrate a plane world no by the way guys no it may look simple when we are looking at the illustration, but then if we are examining actual fingerprint, that's much more complicated. Hindi siya ganun kadaling i-identify. Unless, no, you are already familiar with regards to the rules that uh, uh, is applied in uh, fingerprint identification. But anyway, the purpose of this discussion is to give you an idea only with regards to the basic construction and basic appearance of the different fingerprint pattern. No? Kasi kung alam nyo yung mga characteristic yung mga pattern niya, definitely when you are going to examine an actual fingerprint, uh, an actual fingerprint, then it, you could at least have an idea no, on what type of fingerprint you are dealing with. No? And my aim, of course, at the end of the day, sabi ko nga doon sa ating previous lecture, dapat as of now, you already or you can already identify no? What are the fingerprint pattern that is present on your fingers? Kung ano-ano yung mga combination ng patterns na nandyan. Kasi kung hindi mo pa alam, eh, baka hindi ka nga nakikinig sa ating lecture. No? So, you try looking at your fingertips. No? Tignan nyo kung ma-identify nyo yung mga fingerprint na nandyan. Kung na-identify nyo siya, then definitely you're listening well, you're learning well, and so on. Okay? So, for figure number one, we have there, nilabel natin yung core, nilabel, nilabel natin yung delta, no? There are two deltas there, no? So, definitely, this will be considered as a plane world. Now, what about central packet loop world, no? Uh, ang definition natin kanina is that this is a type of a world where meron tayong world pattern, tapos meron pa tayong mga recurving ridge, which is the characteristic of a loop pattern, No? So it will be considered a central packet loop where when no yung recur uh, yung yung circuit no yung spiral uh yung spiral uh, ridge natin yung isang ridge na kung saan is umikot siya ng 360 turn no is located at the middle no at the middle of the so-called recurving ridge kumbaga from the word packet itself parang naibulsa no si world pattern doon sa recurving ridges presence in the, into the fingerprint no? so that's the appearance I'm pointing this out because later on meron tayong mga tinatawag na accidental world no? and we have double loop world and they're very important no? that we must be able to figure out no? kung kailan natin tatawagin yung combination of the two patterns fingerprint patterns as a central packet loop or an accidental loop world no? So, pag central packet loop, guys, ang, ang, ang uh, circuit no, o yung world pattern must be located at the middle of a recurving ridge. No, yun yung kanyang characteristic. So, I put some label there. No, we have the recurve. No, ibig sabihin, ito yung kumbaga is pumasok sa isang side, no, tapos bumalik at lumabas din lang doon sa isang side, which uh, kung saan siya pumasok, no, which is the basis of identifying whether the fingerprint pattern is a loop. No? So, I have there the illustration. I hope it's clear already. No? Let us uh, jump into our next topic. We have here uh, yung tinatawag natin double loop world. No? It's a pattern that consists of two separate and distinct loop formations. So, this is a combination of two loop pattern. No? Kapag meron kang nakikita na kung saan yung fingerprint mo has a double loop or meron siyang dalawang uh, uh, loop pattern, no? So, that will be considered as a double loop world. No, double loop world sila. Bakit world, sir? Eh, puro naman siya loop. Dapat loop lang. No. Kasi again, no, what's the basis of identifying the fingerprint whether it's a loop or it's a world? No? Isang factor na tinitignan natin dito is how many deltas are present. No? Kasi pag dalawa ang delta, that means that the fingerprint pattern will be considered as, no? it will be considered as, a world pattern. Kapag iisa lang kanyang delta at mayroong mga recurving ridge, no, that will be considered as an uh, loop pattern. No? It's a loop pattern. Either that's a uh, radial or that's uh, uh, what they call this uh, 
ulnar. Okay? So, that's for the double loop. No? Meron tayong dalawang loop that's form no? individually, na form sila individually, na nagsalubong doon sa middle ng fingerprint pattern area, that, that will be labeled as a double loop word. For accidental naman guys, yung accidental loop word, no? or accidental word, uh, it's a pattern that is a combination of two different pattern types except for arches. So, two fingerprint may combine, no? pwedeng mayroong kang combination ng dalawang pattern dyan sa tip ng daliri mo, try to look at it, no? And uh, if there is an instance wherein nag-combine nga si loop at si well pattern, no, then definitely that will be labeled as an accidental well. No? Ang hindi lang pwedeng kapir ng isang uh, kaparehas ng mga fingerprint pattern na meron tayo na alam natin is yung tinatawag nating arches. No? So hindi siya pwedeng ihalo sa mga arches. No? So, for example, a loop and an arch that will not be considered as an accidental world. Kasi ang tinitignan natin for accidental world is that they uh, must be a pattern of different size, by different types. So, it could be a combination of uh, uh, a type of, a, of uh, a type of uh, fingerprint pattern which is, let's say, it's a central packet loop world. Now, tapos combine siya with a loop, no, a plain, uh, an, a radial loop, something like that. So, so that is a two pattern combined together. Ang tawag natin dyan is a whirl or accidental whirl pattern. No? So, there are those instances wherein no, uh, some fingerprint may be paired with arches, but then, no, kapag meron tayong arches, what's missing? Ano yung nawawala doon? Ang nawawala kapag kaganal yung tinatawag nating uh, uh, delta no uh, the delta of of uh, well we know for a fact that arches don't have delta they don't have core and so on that nothing's done to them no? so if that if if uh, a fingerprint pattern that combines is a loop and an arches no we cannot consider that basically as a world why because there is only one delta in those cases no so that's accidental we have there an illustration no for figure number three no, we have two distinct loop pattern there. Meron tayong dalawang loop pattern na magkatabi dyan, no? And there are two delta. So, how do we classify this fingerprint pattern? It will be classified as a double loop word. Double loop siya. For number four, we have the accidental loop world wherein it's a combination between a loop pattern and a world pattern. Pwede yan, no? Pwede rin halimbawa isang... Uh, loop pattern and the central packet loop world no combine combine sila so that will still be labeled as an accidental loop world no it's an accidental loop world ang sabi nating exemption is that kapag ang na mix up or naihalo ay yung tinatawag nating tented arch no I, I mean arches arches then definitely that will not be valid hindi pwedeng magpares ang mga fingerprint pattern towards arches kasi ang arches don't have core, don't have delta and so on while other patterns such as loop, such as swirl have delta and core respectively okay next is we are going to talk about arches naman no? so for arches we have only two division we have plain arch and we have tented arch no? Ang plain arch, well, we discussed some of, of, of this already. No? Ang plain arch is a pattern in which the ridge enter on one side, in which, yeah, in, a, in which uh, it enters on one side, no? and flows no, towards the opposite side. Edit ko lang to, guys. Yeah. Then flows towards the other side. So, I illustrated this already kung ano yung characteristic ng isang arch no pasok siya doon sa isang part na isang side ng fingerprint pattern area and then mag -flow, flow lang siya palabas doon sa opposite side of the pattern area yun yung characteristic ng isang plain arch no uh, masasabi naman natin that the pattern is a tented arch kapag meron tayo yung mga tinatawag nating uh, uh, appendage no mga up thrust no? or upward thrust something like that anyway we have here an illustration. No? May illustration tayo dito. Just to give you an idea how, how does it looks on paper. No? Anong itsura niya. So, figure number 5. Yan yung plain arch. No? 
As you can see, dire-direch, I mean, kumorba lang, tumaas lang konti yung line, pero bumalik din or uh, lumabas din siya doon sa opposite side. No? So, that's an arch. That is an arch no? Kung puro ganyan yung pattern ng uh, uh, fingerprint mo, then definitely that is a plain arch natin tinatawag. No? For figure number 6, kung makita nyo, medyo may makapal doon na banda sa gitna niya. No? Meron yung tinatawag nating truss or up truss. No? May pointed part ang uh, fingerprint na yan. Then, that will not be considered as a plain arch, but rather that will be considered as a tented arch. No? Tented arch yung tawag natin doon kapag may up truss, no? kapag merong appendage, kapag merong uh, uh, something that affected the continuity. No? The continuity of the uh, flow of the pattern or uh, flow of the ridges, then that will be considered as a tented arch. So, nabawa, nagsalubong sila guys, pero hindi maayos yung pagkakasalubong nila that uh, actually pointed out or created an image of either a bifurcation or a converging ridge no? uh, that will be considered as a tented arch kapag nagkataon so po, kapag meron yung mga yun no, yung mga criteria yung binanggit ko the pattern will be labeled as a tented arch instead of a plain arch okay so those are the subfamily no? so far no? so for loops we have two division radial and ulnar no, for world pattern, we have at least, I think, four division. We have central packet loop, we have plain world, we have, uh, uh, ano pa yung iba? We have uh, uh, accidental, and then we have also yung double loop world nating tinatawag. So, that's the characteristic of a uh, uh, world pattern. No? Then, uh, Next is, we're going to talk about the rules in locating delta. Pag-usapan naman natin yung rules in locating delta. No? So, what are the rules set in locating delta? First, no, we must be familiar first with regards to the different forms of delta. By the way, no, I keep on mentioning delta, no, but I still assume that you know already what's a delta. Ang delta is minsan tinatawag din yan na outer terminus, no? Uh, delta refers to the ridge formation that is located at the center or near the divergent le diverging ridge which is known as the type line no so kung ano yung mga pattern na nagpapakita doon no sa bukana kumbaga ng uh, type line uh, that can be considered as a del delta no that's that will be considered as a delta delta is the outer uh, outer terminus na tinatawag sa ibang uh, references so, ano-ano yung mga form na pwede natin gamitin bilang isang, uh, bilang isang delta no, sa isang pattern. So, we have the, uh, you can use bifurcation, pwede ang bifurcation, pwede ang ending ridge, pwede ang er, uh, short ridge, pwede rin ang dot, pwede ang converging ridge, and pwede ang long ridge. So, maraming pwede. No? I think there are seven no, na pwede gamitin. So, I have here an illustration. Let's try to look. Ito yung mga illustration guys. Just in case na hindi nyo na maalala kung ano yung itsura ng bifurcation, ano yung itsura ng ending ridge, ano yung itsura ng short ridge, that converging ridge, and long ridge. These are the common types. No? Ito yung common types na uh, ginagamit no? ng uh, mga examiner as their delta. No? So, it could be either, ang, ang, ang delta could either be a bifurcation, pwede rin isang ending ridge, or pwede isang short ridge, pwede rin siyang that, pwede rin converging ridge, or pwede long ridge na tinatawag, okay? Another illustration there, no? Na kung saan na uh, gumawa tayo ng uh, illustration wherein we are applying yung mga different forms of delta, such as Figure number 1, nakita nyo, gumamit tayo ng bifurcation na sa delta. Figure number 2, gumamit tayo ng ending ridge, no? yung dulo ng isang ridge as a delta. No? Uh, figure number 3, no? gumamit tayo ng dot no? or tuldok as a delta. No? For figure number 4, gumamit tayo ng short ridge, no? yung putol na linya, putol na ridge. No? As, uh, as as a delta no and uh, figure number 5 gumamit tayo ng converging ridge no so i just showed you kanina what's a converging ridge and last is gumamit tayo ng tinatawag nating long ridge no as as a delta okay so any of those things can be used as a delta no in case they are present now 
uh, well, we know that delta is the outer part, no? the outer terminus na tinatawag. That's the ridge formation found near or at the center of the pipeline. However, no, it's not easy to identify which is which is delta. No, it's maybe easy right now that we are dealing with just an illustration. But if we are going to examine an actual fingerprint, no, kahit rolled print pa man yan, malaki na enlarged, no, medyo mahirap yatang uh, ilocate yung mga, yung, yung pwede natin gamitin bifurcation kasi nga masyadong dikit-dikit no, sa ating kamay ang itsura niyan. Ngayon, uh, in case no, that uh, there is the so-called bifurcation no, that does not open towards the core, then definitely that will not be considered as a delta. Let's try to look at the illustration. So for illustration number one, let's try to apply rule one of the identification of the delta. No? So as you can see, meron tayo dito ng dalawang, dalawang bifurcation guys. Yung isa is na label dun sa pinakataas, that's a bifurcation. Now on the lower part, no, that is also a bifurcation. Now, in selecting where's the delta, we selected actually yung lower part. Bakit yung lower part yung pinili natin? Because according to rule 1, no, hindi natin pipiliin ang isang bifurcation which is ang opening niya is not actually towards the core. No, so saan yung core natin, no? The uh, inner terminus na tinatawag, no? Yung pinaka central ng fingerprint pattern area, that's the core. Ngayon, kapag may mga bifurcation na uh, pwedeng gamitin delta near the type line, no? But what we must take into consideration is that the the pattern, the ridges should open towards the uh, core na tinatawag. So yung una, yung pinakataas doon, guys, we did not consider that as a delta. Although it qualifies kasi it, it is, uh, uh, it, the, the fingerprint pattern is located near the type line or just in front of the type line. No? And uh, another thing is that uh, it's a bifurcation. However, no, it's not because it's a bifurcation, we will automatically select it. We must consider that well, what, we, what we need to first to consider is that did the opening of the bifurcation open towards the core or not? If not, then that will not be labeled as a delta. Okay? Another rule with regards to locating delta. No, a bifurcation is always selected as a delta if, there's, if there is another type of delta formation just equally as close to the point of divergence. So let's say, for example, there are two possible delta. No, may meron kang pagpipilian na pwedeng maging possible delta doon sa inyong fingerprint pattern. So, it just so happen na meron tayong isang bifurcation. As you can see, may bifurcation, may label pa. No? Then, we have a dot. No? Pagka ganyan guys ang nangyari, ang priority natin talaga dito as a fingerprint uh, delta, no? as a delta, will be uh, bifurcation. Yun talaga yung ating Yun talaga yung kumbaga yung ating uh, mass priority na tignan, no? Ngayon, kung walang bifurcation, that's the time that we could use the other form of delta na pwede natin gamitin. But, no, if there is a bifurcation and there is as another separate uh, pattern near the type line, no? What we must consider is always the bifurcation. No, we always stick with the bifurcation. Gumamit lang tayo ng hindi bifurcating ridges, no? Kapag uh, uh, wala na talaga tayong choice, Okay? Another rule no, in uh, locating the delta is that when a pattern shows a series of bifurcation opening towards the core at the point of divergence, no, the bifurcation nearest to the core is chosen. So we have here an illustration for uh, figure number 3. No? So kung mapansin nyo guys, marami tayong bifurcation. There are at least 1, 2, 3. No? I labeled them naman. So, isa yung pinakamataas, yung panggitna, then pinakamababa. Ngayon, what's the rule applied in, uh, what is the rule applied in uh, personal identification rule 3? No? Ang sabi dito, in uh, locating the delta, no? in case that there are the presence of several bifurcating ridges near the type line, what we must select is of course the uh, 
innermost no yung pinaka malapit kumbaga doon sa uh, gitna okay so like the illustration that we have there no we selected the nearest bifurcation no that opens towards the core that's the delta no the rest it's not labeled as delta because that's what the rule says on rule number 3 uh, we have also here another rule no in locating delta the delta may not be located in the middle of a ridge running between the type lines towards the core so let's look into the illustration here no ang possible delta natin dito guys is a short ridge no but what part kasi di ba makikita natin may ending ridge tayo nakikita dito ending ridge na papunta kay uh, pa palabas ng type line at ending ridge na papalapit kay core no so saan ang i-consider nating delta guys no you know uh, it's really important no, yung, yung tinatawag nating accuracy when determining where's the delta, where's the core kasi we are basically counting no, yung ridges that intervenes between the fingerprint patterns so binibilang natin yan guys kaya nga napakahalaga na dapat may ilagay natin ng tama no, yung location ng delta no? so for ending ridge no, ang dapat pinipili dyan as a delta is the ending ridge nearest to the core no? So as you can see, doon sa opposite side niya, meron yung not here. Nilagay ko lang as label, not here. Ibig sabihin, hindi hindi doon dapat ilagay yung delta. Kundi, no, doon sa kabila. No, doon sa ending ridge ng, uh, ng ridge pattern na yan, which is nearest to the core, kumbaga. No? So that's how we locate delta in this specific example. Okay? Ngayon, no? Uh, since we're done with regards to the rules and locating the delta, let's talk about some rules also uh, applied in locating core na tinatawag. And very important, no? Ang core is very essential part of fingerprint pattern, no? For core, no? For core, uh, the rules with regards to locating the core is that we must see to it that we select the knee at the centermost or innermost part, no? The innermost part of the uh, fingerprint pattern no kung kumbaga no ang, ang alam natin with regards to core is that we select yung pinaka sentro no pinaka sentro ng fingerprint pattern that's how we basically uh how how we usually decide whether or where is the core located in the fingerprint pattern however no there are instances that fingerprint pattern may be somewhat like tricky no Anyway, before we proceed on to that, let's look into the rule 1 illustration. Kung nakita nyo, no? Since ang rule natin in identifying where's the core is, uh, ang, rule, ang only rule natin dyan is, the core is the, no, that's the thing that we must remember. The core is the innermost ridge formation in the pattern area. So, yeah, no, yung pinaka-centro ng fingerprint pattern natin nito will be labeled as the core, no? And the bifurcating ridge that open towards the core will be labeled as delta. So it's very easy kapag ganyan yung scenario. However, it's not always like that. May mga instances tayo na kung saan is uh, medyo magulo at nakakalito yung uh, itsura ng fingerprint pattern na ina-examine natin. So that's the time that we must remember the rules in locating the core. No? Second rule is that when the innermost recurving ridge contains no ridge ending or rod raising, as high as the shoulder, the core is placed on the shoulder of the loop, no? So let's say, for example, the fingerprint pattern will appear like this, no? Wala siyang fingerprint pattern in the middle, no? In the innermost part where the recurving ridge is located. So, ang magiging delta na natin dito, guys, or ang magiging core na natin dito, guys, will be the recurving ridge itself. However, no? How do we decide whether at what part of the recurving ridge, of the innermost recurving ridge, will be labeled as the core no ang rule to natin stated that when there is no rod no or any significant uh, ridge doon sa pinaka sentro ng fingerprint pattern and the only thing that's pres uh, present is yung tinatawag nating recurving ridge no kung yun lang yung present ang rule natin diyan is that we first identify yung tinatawag nating shoulder asan ba ang shoulder ng isang recurving ridge then we select the farthest, no? the uh, shoulder that is farthest from the uh, delta. So as you can see, ang pinili natin na, delta, na core dito is yung 
side kumbaga ng innermost recurving ridge na yon yung mas malayo sa delta it's not the nearest no so that's how we decide whether uh, the shoulder of the recurving ridge will be considered as a core or will it be considered as uh, any other else okay for rule 3 no rule 3 where the inner, innermost recurving ridge contains an uneven no number of rods no so it means that it uh, odd numbers siya no uh, an even number of rods rising as high as the shoulder of the said recurving ridge ang core gen will be placed at the end of the center rod no whether it touches the loop or ridge so for example as you can see meron tayong rod by, by the way no rod ang tawag natin doon no sa mga uh, straight ridges na yon the surrounded by a recurving ridge yung tatlo doon kumbaga no uh, that is rod na tinatawag so kapag mag-isa lang siya guys automatic that that will be labeled as the core however paano yan tatlo sila so what's the rule no in that case where the number of rod no is uneven no ibig sabihin hindi pantay no yung pinaka sentro ng uh, rod na yan ng fingerprint pattern na yan will still be applied or will still be considered as the core no yun pa rin yung i-consider nating core if it just so happen no, that the fingerprint pattern is or contains yung tinatawag nating even numbers so ibig sabihin it could be uh, pwedeng dalawang rod ang present pwedeng apat na rod yung present pwedeng eight or six na rod, yung rod yung present how uh, are we going to determine the core in that uh, scenario? No? So if there are an even or there are even number of rods rising as high as the shoulder, ang pipili natin will be the rod that is no, uh, located uh, upon the end of the farthest or one, uh, yeah, the farthest uh, rod uh, formation no, from the uh, from the core uh, from the delta so if you are going to look at our illustration number four you know we have there meron tayong rod doon no apat sila so how will we decide are we going to select the farthest we are not going to select the farthest what we should we shall do is that we select the two innermost rod no and apply the rule three ganun lang yan no so, piliin natin yung two innermost rod kasi nga apat sila. So, ibig sabihin, merong gigit na. No? At yung gigit na na yan ay yung dalawang pinaka-sentro niyan. Halimbawa, lima sila. Pag lima sila, automatic na kung saan yung pinaka-sentro ng limang rod na yan will be considered as the core. However, kapag uh, meron tayong uh, even number, no? so how do we decide whether where we will locate the core? Siyempre, it decide that eh, the the uh, rule three still applies no na kung saan let's select no the innermost ridge characteristic or ridges no and in case there are two of them two uh, choice that we could select as, as a core no we always select the farthest from that of the delta so ano yung pinakamalayo dun sa dalawang diyan na nasa gitna syempre yung nandun sa uh, bandang left side so that will be labeled as the core and the delta will be also labeled so that's how we simplify no uh sorry for the uh very simplistic discussion with regards to uh the topic that we discussed but i do hope i was able to impart some knowledge with regards to those matter if you have questions you may comment on the comment section no and uh yeah thank you for listening that's it for today see you guys on our next lecture Bye bye